Hello, my name's Ed, a junior doctor in the UK, and today we're gonna to be breaking down the medical science of probably my favorite film in the last few years, The Batman, which follows the story of a superhero called Vengeance who, in a mad twist, turns out to be Batman. Obviously, this video is gonna contain loads more spoilers, so if you haven't seen the movie, definitely go check it out and come back in. I'll talk a little bit about at the end why I love it so much, but for now, let's break down the medical science. Sorry, Lieutenant, but we got blunt force trauma, lacerations on the head. First up, we see the brutal murder of the Riddler's first victim, the Mayor Don Mitchell Jr., where he is beaten with a carpet tool, and the police reporting there was blunt force trauma and lacerations to the head. So lacerations, a deep cut or tear, we normally think of as a penetrating trauma, cutting through the skin, but when we have a blunt force trauma to a bony area like the scalp, the force can often cause a splitting of the skin that looks like something sharp has been used. And the scalp is very vascular, so it can bleed a lot. So if you're knocked unconscious, you'll be unable to apply pressure to the area or get help. And so that alone can be enough to kill you from blood loss. And so this goes some way to explain the large amount of blood at the scene. However, it's more likely the cause of death was a traumatic brain injury. So blunt force trauma causing a depressed skull fracture. So basically crushing the bone. And once the bone is broken, the force will be transmitted directly to the delicate brain, causing a massive cerebral contusion basically breaking up the brain tissue. At this point, there is still a possibility of recovery if the patient gets urgent neurosurgical help. And since many of the brain's control mechanisms would be damaged, we've got to make sure the patient is well oxygenated, has normal blood pressure, normal blood glucose, but they are still at high risk of long-term neurological disabilities depending on what area of the brain is damaged. However, we know it's fatal in this patient. So as well as brain contusions, we'd have brain swelling and an intracranial bleed. So a bleed inside the skull of which there are a few different types, but they all raise the intracranial pressure. So raise the pressure inside the skull, squashing the brain and ultimately kill you by forcing your brain stem, the area critical for your vital functions out of the bottom of your skull, what we call brain herniation. So when this starts to happen, you may technically still be alive. So there may still be some breathing and the heart will still be beating, but there is no chance of recovery. And we learn this in the movie as Batman says that Don Mitchell was still alive when his thumb was cut off. Thumb was severed. Killer may have taken it as a trophy. He was alive when it was cut off. So he was potentially unconscious, bleeding out and herniating while his thumb was removed. Echimosis. Batman's figured this out because he's read his medical textbooks. In his words, echimosis, so basically a big purpley bruise. So this is a result of small blood capillaries being ruptured and this blood then spreads and pools beneath the skin. Many of you have probably had this before and because of gravity, this ecchymosis can end up quite a long way from the actual injury. So for the blood to pool and cause significant ecchymosis, we know it must be still flowing around the body when it happens. So the patient would have been still alive when his thumb was removed. His father saved my life. I got shot in the chest, right here. We find out that Dr. Thomas Wayne, Bruce Wayne's dad, performed emergency surgery for a gunshot wound to the right side of Falcone's chest. Anyone that follows my rapid fight scene trauma diagnosis videos will know what we're dealing with. A punctured lung, so a pneumothorax, blood around the lung, what we call a hemothorax, both of which can be fatal and pretty quickly, but even worse than that, we could have a tension pneumothorax where the flap from the penetrating injury sucks air in and doesn't let it out and this can kill you in just a couple minutes. I couldn't go to no hospital, so we showed up on his doorstep, operated right on the dining room table. And we find out that Thomas Wayne treated this on the dining room table, which sounds mad, but actually the immediate treatment of any of these lung injuries would be a chest drain, so a tube inserted into the chest cavity underneath the armpit to allow the air and blood to escape so that the lung can inflate. The tube also has a valve to stop anything going in the wrong direction. And you know what? This probably could be done on a dining room table and you also probably have the stuff around your house to kind of improvise it. Basically just the tube 
that goes through a water seal at the bottom. I mean, I'm saying it's possible. No doctor should actually do this. <laughs> Thomas Wade would probably get struck off for doing this on the dining room table, but I'm just saying it is possible. You know, Falcone doesn't sound like he had a lot of options. The problem with stabilizing the patient on the dining room table is <laughs> what the hell do we do then? Because even if you're a surgeon, you don't have any specialist equipment, any oxygen, anesthetic drugs, any blood for a transfusion, any imaging or any other healthcare staff to help you manage this patient definitively. What do you do once you put the chest drain in? Transfer them to the lounge for further management or even to the bathroom for emergency surgery. So that's where this becomes less realistic. Last thing we are going to talk about is what is this green liquid that Batman, sorry, Vengeance injects himself with at the finale in the stadium. He takes a close range gunshot wound to the chest. Given his armor, I'm assuming this is a blunt force trauma rather than a penetrating trauma. And we subsequently see him on the floor beginning to lose consciousness. Now, what I thought was happening was that he'd sustained some kind of internal bleeding like a hemothorax, what we talked about before, or even some injury to the heart. And this was sending him into circulatory collapse, dropping his blood pressure, what we call shock, and that was meaning he was losing consciousness because he's not providing enough blood pressure to perfuse his brain. In this case, no drug is going to help him. He needs the actual issue dealt with. Sure, we can give some things to help the bleeding, maybe even a blood transfusion, but he needs a chest drain or pericardial centesis or emergency theater because we need to sort out the cause. And we know this isn't the case because he ends up helping for what seems like a few hours after. So we know there's no major issue going on from this injury. The drug also appears to not only stop him passing out, but also be <laughs> performance enhancing, which of course these type of drugs exist. Just ask Lance Armstrong. Naturally, we might assume it's adrenaline. I've actually read on a forum someone suggesting it was adrenaline and there is some logic in that because it's the chemical that we produce naturally during our fight or flight response so whenever we're getting ready for action so this increases our heart rate sends more blood to our muscles opens up our airways and as you know whenever you've had a fright it kicks in pretty darn quick just as we see here. And adrenaline can also be injected into the muscle. In fact, that's the route we use when we use adrenaline to treat anaphylaxis. But the real question is, why does Batman need adrenaline? He's arguably got plenty going around his body. This is the climax of the movie. And evidence shows artificially boosting your adrenaline does little to enhance your performance. You'll just get loads of the side effects. So tremor, feeling sick, feeling anxious, and palpitations too. Really what I think is much more likely is the green liquid is a mixture of an analgesic and a stimulant. One of the reasons why I think he's struggling to get up, he's actually in severe pain and probably a bit winded too, so a bit of spasm of the diaphragm, but he's probably got a rib fracture here, maybe even a sternum fracture from a blunt force trauma, and that is what is incapacitating him. If you've ever seen anyone with a broken bone or had one yourself, you go very gray, pale, you feel like you might pass out. In which case, I think we'd have a strong painkiller in there. So an opiate like fentanyl, which is the drug of choice for combat medics. And this would allow him to push through the pain. It certainly wouldn't be performance enhancing though. In fact, it's more likely to sedate you. So on top of that, I think we also have a stimulant in the mix, something like an amphetamine, which will improve concentration, reaction times, and can also help muscle strength and endurance by delaying the sensation of fatigue. All this sounds pretty miraculous, but I'm talking about very, very small gains. Certainly not what we see here, but gains nevertheless. So these substances are still banned from sports. But yeah, these are really addictive things. And if you take too much, <laughs> it's definitely gonna inhibit your performance. So actually it's probably the fact that he's got good pain relief now and the performance enhancing aspect is that he's just really mad now. 
and entered beast mode. Both these drugs are quick acting and can be given into the muscle like we see here. So probably the closest to what we have in our universe from what we see on screen. Within the Batman universe though, it's likely this substance is the drug Venom, the performance enhancing chemical that gives Bane his super strength. And in that regard, it's more closely related to maybe testosterone and anabolic steroid or growth hormone. Both of these increase your skeletal muscles, but take days to weeks to months to work wouldn't be instantly like we see here. And there you go, just some of my thoughts on the medical science from the Batman. As I said, loved the movie. I loved the kind of film noir mystery aspect to it. But my favorite bit was just the character art of Batman, sort of ruling by fear, scaring people, even good people with his vengeance approach from the shadows to showing him guiding people with hope when he lit up that flare at the end. I thought it was brilliantly done. I'd love to know what you thought of the Batman and any of the science aspects of it. If you want some more Batman content, I've done a rapid fight scene trauma diagnosis of the Batman versus Superman warehouse scene. So breaking down all the injuries from that epic scene. It comes highly recommended by me. So I'll wrap things up there. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. I hope you're all well and I'll be back soon.